Welcome everybody to this webinar Wednesday. Welcome to Dental XP. This is Dr. Andrea Agnini speaking and here we have also Alessandro. Good uh, webinar Wednesday also for myself and thanks to all the Dental XP team for the video editing and to the Salama brothers for having us uh, here once again. Today we will be speaking about the surgical veneer grafting protocol which is a protocol that can be utilized in immediate implant placement and this is going to be also the, the topic of the end zone that we will be doing in the Dental XP Global Symposium next February in Miami. Before to start, you have the opportunity to enter and join our reserved area in our website, which is www.studianini.it. You basically have the opportunity by simply filling your name, last name and email to receive a link in where you can use this password Dental XP and uh, for all the next week you will be able to enter and download for free articles, uh, insights of our book Digital Dental Revolution and this is by Quintessence uh, and especially the articles on the surgical veneer grafting. So let's start now. Today's goal is to explain you the thought, the thought process uh, which bring us to develop the surgical veneers grafting protocol. And as I was mentioning before, this article was recently published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dentistry in the winter edition together with uh, Team Atlanta with help us a lot in created and define this, uh, this protocol. Okay, in anterior maxilla, the stated outcome and its uh, long-term aesthetic stability is of paramount importance. That is why we should consider all the options we have and what we should do before extracting the tooth. And options are different. First of all, we have timing option, and this is one of the most important and most famous uh, consensus conferences uh, which uh, everybody refers for. Uh, refers of uh, such as the timing because uh, it depends the uh, compare when we extract the tooth uh, when are we going to place the implant we have type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 type 1 is the immediate implant placement so we extract the tooth and we immediately place the implant and we have the type 2 which is uh, uh, the what has been called the early delayed implant placement four to eight weeks after the extraction which is the the boozer and belser uh, favorite approach and then we have type 3 and type 4 8 to 16 and 16 to 20 weeks later but uh, time uh, timing is not the only option depends also which kind of scenario which kind of anatomical scenario we we are in front in order to decide whether to place or not to place an implant and these Two articles, one from Team Atlanta and one from Danny Starno, are referring to the type 1, type 2 and type 3 socket classification, which is basically the presence or the absence of the buccal plate. Type 1, we both have buccal plate and soft tissue, whether in type 2 we have soft tissue, but we are missing the buccal plate and we will see that this in this specific cl clinical scenario it is going to be very critical to do a a defined and strategic diagnostic approach while in type 3 we are missing both the buccal plate the soft tissue and we have loss also of interdental bone height so the type 1 scenario could be defined as the ideal one with the presence of the buccal plate and the soft tissue as well but uh, is it always so ideal well Ideal situation means that we have one millimeter of uh, thickness of uh, buccal plate and one uh, and a thick uh, gingival biotype. And unfortunately, this ideal situation is uh, not so common. And we will see that the literature is telling us that mainly, roughly 15 to 20 percent is this. Uh, LDS situation. So we should think also what should we do when we have a, a buccal plate which is thin and a gingival biotype which is thin. Of course. Uh, we also need to think that how can we diagnose type 1, type 2 and type 3 first of all and how should we approach because the goal, the main goal in type 1 scenario is that we should preserve, we should, we should maintain what Mother Nature gave us and so we will see all the possible uh, procedures to obtain this goal. When we are instead, when we are in a type 2 and a type 3 scenario, so we have a tooth present but without an intact socket, all our efforts should be directed to the restoration of an adequate alveolar and gingival height before placing the implant. So you see that 
type 1, type 2 and type 3 have diff a very different ways of being treated and today we will focus in mainly on type 1 clinical scenarios. The possibility to choose immediate implant placement with immediate provisionalization provides several benefits such as a reduced number of surgical procedures and consequently a decreased treatment time, Andrea. Avoiding interim removable prosthesis increased patient comfort but most important a better soft tissue control preservation. And so basically our goal should be to create an harmony in tissue profile and color and the, all the, var the, the variables, all the parameters which are uh, uh, involved in this is are basically the hard tissue which is the bone, the, connective, the soft tissue which is connective tissue mainly and, the, and we will discuss about the importance of managing properly and utilizing the connective tissue and also the restoration. So we will discussing about the prosthetic contour, the choice of the abutment and which kind of material are, do we have today available. So we should define the two pos possible clinical scenarios, immediate loading implant in a fresh extraction socket and immediate loading implant in a helid ridge. Those are two completely different ball games. Yes, actually they are two completely different ball games because even if we are discussing about immediate loading implant, it's much easier in a fresh extraction so it's more complicated in a fresh extraction socket to obtain primary stability which which is the key with the key parameter to achieve in order to immediately load the implant whether we will see that is going to be easier as Alessandro already mentioned to preserve to manage the soft tissue around on the contrary when we are placing an implant in needed bridge due to the fact that we have like a, the bone crest which is already there as you can see here in, a, in the video obtaining primary stability is easier because we don't have that empty canvas we don't have that empty socket like we have in the immediate uh, implant in a fresh extraction socket but we will see that the soft tissue management requires a, a, a different skill So let's see this case that was uh, treated and completed uh, by Alessandro 10, 10 or 12 years ago with PFM full mouth restoration that uh, down the road had this um, uh, complication. You see that we have this bridge uh, 14, uh, 14 uh, 15 and 16. Unfortunately we had a, a fracture, a palatal fracture on number 14 and the patient is uh, walked in to the clinic asking what could what, what could have possibly done and of course she didn't want to 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 have an all in her mouth and so we should think not only how can we treat that specific scenario but how can we strategically sequence the different corrective therapies here you see that we have like um, a quite um, we have two different scenarios here we have uh, probably one a fresh extraction socket to treat number 14 and we have one elet ridge or number 15 so the, in order to avoid an interim removal of prosthesis to this patient we should place we can place two implants one in a fresh extraction socket one in an elet ridge which as I, as i just mentioned are really two completely different animals to treat but at the same time we should manage properly the provisional restoration we should define also the clinical scenario we are in and it's a type 1 and actually it's, it's a type 1 in number 14 which is an ideal situation because we have a thick buccal plate, we have a thick gingival biotype and we are mainly in the posterior region. So let's see how this was treated. You see extraction the same day and in the same day was placed a, an implant in a fresh extraction socket and a flapless implant in the elite region number 15. Of course, provisional restoration was the key in order to maintain that soft tissue around those implants. In fact, thanks uh, to the properly shaped provisional restoration, it has been possible to manage at best the soft tissue around. And we will see that managing the soft tissue it's really the key because the soft tissue are basically the frames of our final painting which is, the, which is our restoration.
Look in fact the situation at three months follow-up. Once I unscrewed the provisional restoration for the first time and here we have two implants next to each other and look at the inter implant papilla. We were able, thanks to the proper implant, to the correct implant placement and to the proper provisional restoration management to preserve this soft tissue all around the, the implants and in this way maintaining the overall aesthetic of the, of the restoration. And being in the posterior area and in maximum intercuspation restoration, there is the chance to combine the digital impression benefits together with the monolithic materials once. Two adjacent implants split together, passing from the impression appointment to the final restoration in one single shot, avoiding also to produce a model. But uh, let's now take in consideration this case, apparently similar to the previous one, with one post-extraction site and one hill bridge to manage in the lateral incisors area. Yes, only apparently similar to the previous one because here, first of all, we are in the anterior aesthetic area. We have thin gingival biotype. In the previous case, our goal was mainly to maintain the interimplant papilla, while here, our goal is to maintain the overall volume, bacopalatally. Yes, buccal palatal collapse of the ridge is a significant uh, challenge uh, in the restorative uh, and implant dentistry. And this, uh, and this is why you will always see the occlusal picture of each case we are presenting here today. And look, for example, at the aesthetic risk profile of this young lady. Yes, it uh, was extremely high as shown by the exposure of the transition zone. The spaces were regular but also narrow. There was no interdental bone loss as shown by the periapical X-ray evaluation. And look, in these kind of cases, the diagnostic approach is critical, the anatomical scenario. Yes, the gingival biotype and the interdental attaching bone level are mandatory to collect before deciding which corrective therapy to utilize and its strategic sequence. Diagnostic approach, clinically speaking, is of extreme importance, but is not the only one that we need to detect, because also the anatomical structures, thanks especially to the CBCT evaluation, are of crucial importance in these kind of cases. We need to uh, record all the information of the bone volume, of the medial distal size, of the height of the alveolar bone, and all of these information are given by the CBCT analysis, which we strongly recommend to do in each specific case when you approach an anterior aesthetic area. And this is how we treated this specific patient. In, number, in, uh, in tooth number 2.2, we placed uh, an immediate implant in an inlet ridge doing also a guided bone regeneration in order to recreate the root profile of the, um, of the situation. And you see that we all also add like a surgical guide because we strongly believe that uh, the implant must always be prosthetically guided. And uh, this is what we did exactly on the contralateral side as well because it was a uh, reduce, uh, if we could call it like this, since we have a baby tooth uh, on number 1.2, uh, reduce a fresh extraction socket where we place our implant uh, also in this case uh, prosthetically guided. And this is the final situation at the end of the surgical protocol of this specific patient. But uh, when we discuss about uh, immediate implant in the static zone, we will see that we will always need uh, a protocol which is a combination of a surgical procedure and a prosthetic procedures. And despite uh, we have two different anatomical sites, uh, the prosthetic management does not change. Protecting the surgical site with a rubber dam 